On this week's show, Michelle Fontaine takes us to Cortis Junction, an interesting Arizona destination that many people probably pass right by, not knowing what lies right up the road a bit. Also, Jeff Johnston and Andy Balaruki from Thetford talk about the Smart Tote 2 XL and new contest we're just starting. Later, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us some interesting trailer towing accessories. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Now, Quarters Junction may seem like just an empty section in the middle of nowhere that is known as the pathway to the Grand Canyon and other tourist destinations, but Join me as we head down the road and check out a few gems in Cordes Junction. The RV park is part of a larger complex, which includes the 50s diner, backseat bar, and motel property. There are currently 22 sites available and 24 more large rig sites and RV storage under development. The 50s themed diner is really cool. Friendly staff and tasty lunch fare, along with 45 records on the wall and even a jukebox, make that frosty milkshake even more fun. The 50s Diner is actually only about 30 minutes from our Prescott Valley home, and it's one of our favorite lunch stops. The attached backseat bar offers plenty of evening entertainment as well. Now let's catch up with Lance and Bill over at the High Desert Heritage Museum in Cortez Junction. When we have events at ARCO, we get increases here because ARCO Santi is also a performing arts center. And then over here, the jellies and salsas and sauces are residents of ARCO Santi are the ones that make. And then a really fun thing here is the um, local Rockhound group. Yeah. They came in and said, We'll find rocks and give them to you and you sell them to build the museum. And if a visitor arrives, we want to go to Tuziku to see the ruins. We want to go to Jerome. We want to go to Sedona. Uh, we can talk with them. We've got some maps we made ourselves so they can plan their day out. Lance shows us the map of Arcosanti, our next destination. Arcosanti is a world famous experimental micro city and performance center and is the highlight destination in Cordes Junction. At the second story of this building are the dormitories for the workshoppers. Be sure to visit the High Desert Heritage Museum in Cordes Junction. And they will steer you in the right direction. And now, onto the highlight of our visit to Cordes Junction. Less than two miles from the RV park and visitor center is Arcosanti. We'll learn more from someone who personally knew this visionary artist, Paolo Soleri. Thank you so much for um, giving us a tour of Arcosanti. Well, welcome. We're so happy that you're here today. This is our gallery, visitor center, mm -hmm. and uh, this is where visitors start when they come uh, for day visits here and also to pick up their keys for overnight guest stays. Oh. <laughs> I've been able to uh, be here for 40, almost 49 years. I came in 1970 when there was nothing here, not even the road uh, that you may have uh, bounced a on a little bit. Very slowly down. with the <laughs> RV. Mm -hmm. The whole place is uh, pedestrian. They're not automobiles linking everything and it, it gives you this connection to the natural environment that's the whole mm -hmm. point of the place. Paolo Soleri. Mm -hmm. What was he like? Well, he was a brilliant. He was a genius. He was also had a very shy side. He also had a very arrogant side. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists are like that. Mm -hmm. um, artists have to have a lot of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And the idea of making dense, compact, three-dimensional urban form so that you could shrink the footprint of the built environment, have everyone living apartment style. Mm -hmm. uh, but th what that does is allow a shared access and both visual and actual to the natural landscape surrounding the built environment. And he was able to attract so many students that are still coming to try to help make an actual physical walkthrough demonstration, which is what we have here. And it's just a fraction of what we'd like to build. And actually what we like to build is still evolving, but we know we want to make a place where 1,500 to 5,000 people can live in that dense, compact, three-dimensional way. He's a real believer in 
um, getting your hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just learning how to shovel dirt, it, you would be surprised how many young people come here who they, they haven't had that experience. Mm -hmm. And Powell was a very grounded person. That's how he happened to make these bells because he uh, had to do things with his hands and be creative with his hands. Mm -hmm. So making both the ceramic and the bronze bells uh, was a way not only to support his nonprofit educational foundation, which owns and promotes this whole project, um, but also a way for him to, to have his hands, you know, in getting dirty every day. Mm -hmm. um, he was a real believer in what he called in Latin, homo faber, man the maker. Aquacam possums, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Organizer of the Carpetbag Brigade, who performs at Aquasanti with her team. So the Carpetbag Brigade is a physical theatre company, um, and what we do is we hold an event called Global Still Congress, where we bring in stilters from around the world, and we are at Aquasanti for two weeks, and we do a two-week workshop where we're exchanging vocabulary, and at the end of the two weeks, we host a performance. Mm -hmm. which um, is when the public is allowed to come and witness what we've done for the two weeks and we have a site-specific performance so we roam the whole of Arcosanti so everything that you've seen here today is brought to life through theatre. Later, we were invited into the archives to learn how artist Paolo Soleri brought his visions to life. Mm -hmm. We use three, four foot <coughs> butcher paper, very Thin, crappy paper. Oh, not very good paper. <laughs> uh, but he would, he would do a hundred feet, and he'd roll it up and unroll it. He'd keep the same scale. He, he'd be drawing about the same topic. He just, and, and he would draw with a pen. He would make, he wouldn't erase. He was just, he was incredible. Really incredible. Gifted. Although there are several places to stay in the area in your RV, Elena tells us about their newest offering at Aquasanti. So the Sky Suite uh, sits on the third floor of our East Crescent. Um, it is has about 180 views of mm -hmm. the landscape, and so this is definitely one of the best points to be able to look out at the beautiful natural high desert landscape. Yes, so we have two bedrooms. Uh, we have a kitchenette and a full bathroom with mm -hmm. a shower. Uh, this beautiful living area, and then it has a terrace um, on the outside. We started uh, using Airbnb about three years ago. Um, it's been an amazing platform for us to uh, bring in other visitors that maybe would not have heard of Arcosanti. Um, Airbnb's, you know, an international platform, and uh, it's been really, really lovely. We have about probably about 50% of our guests um, come onto the site because of the advertising. So people just look up Arizona, and and they're going to see your your apartment here and say, wow, this looks like a really neat area. And, and really, Arcosanti is very unusual, a very back to nature, very communal, very uh, culturally active. Definitely. And uh, being uh, an overnight guest uh, is one of the best ways to mm. experience that culture and community. Um, you, as an overnight guest, get to kind of have a bit more freedom of how mm -hmm. you explore the site versus if you're just doing a guided tour, you know, you just have that one hour, but if you come for a night, I definitely recommend to, um, <laughs> to be able to get a full experience. We do have one other Airbnb that's the, the studio, mm. and that one is an ADA uh, rated Perfect. Room. So it's on the main level of the site. It has a parking spot that you drive right up to and you're right outside the door. So we do have accessibility. Wonderful. But we have 
a, we have overnight accommodations to fit any price point, including campers and mm -hmm. RVers. And RVers, <laughs> that's right. You can park your RV in the parking lot, dry camping, no, no, no hookups, but dry camping and just enjoy the area as well. Yes, also for events, that's also an option. Mm -hmm. People can park their RVs for a very small fee. You can find out more about the apartment at Airbnb. Yes, just search Arcosanti, Arizona, mm -hmm. or uh, you can go to our website, which is arcosanti.org. At Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. Hi, I'm Jeff with Rolling On TV. We're here at the campground with Andy from Thetford. And Andy, last night we had a really great time with the chili cook-off and the draft beer tasting festival. <laughs> But obviously that's going to put a real stress on the system on here in the trailer. So uh, it's a good thing we're here to talk about your new Smart Tote 2. Portable holding tanks have been part of the RV industry for decades, but uh, you guys have come up with some pretty sophisticated new features from what I understand. You're correct. Portable waste tanks have been around for a while, and for those that don't know, they're used when you're at a campsite and there may not be a dump station nearby. So as you fill up your holding tanks, rather than breaking camp to take your RV to the dump station, you can fill into the portable waste tank and then take your portable waste tank to the dump station. And Thetford, as the sanitation expert, we've really taken a close look at what is needed by the RVers. We want to make it the most convenient process uh, for the RVers. We recognize that this may not be the most fun thing to do, but uh, we've, we've designed it in such a way that um, it can be easy and can be very clean and sanitary. Well, sophistication is something that the average RVer may not think about when in terms of a uh, portable waste tank, but uh, your new product sounds pretty interesting, so let's go take a look at it. Oh, great. Oh, so this is it. Looks a lot different than the ones we're accustomed to. Yes, so here we have our 27-gallon LX unit. LX stands for uh, luxurious, if you will, and, and what it has is it's got a handle built in and some front wheels, which makes it a lot easier for towing. This is a 27-gallon, so it can be heavy, over 200 pounds, and a lot of people want to be able to use the handle and the wheels to tow it. Yeah, and I notice there's a little cutout here that looks an awful lot like the diameter of a hitch ball. That's right. So if you're not hand towing the unit, um, you can mount it to a ball hitch and tow it with a vehicle to the dump station. Yeah, slowly, cautiously. Correct. Right? It's yeah. not built for the Indy 500. Uh, you want to keep it within a five mile an hour uh, uh, speed, so. Yeah, well, it, uh, it's nice to have it tall like that so I can stand up without having to bend over to work on it. That's a That's good point, cool. Jeff. One of the things that we did with this handle is we made it a telescoping handle. For a tall guy like you, it telescopes and you can extend it. Here it is extended and you can see it's very comfortable. Uh, I think you're comfortable, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, be able to stand up here without bending over. Good. That's cool. Good. And for a guy that's a little bit shorter like me, if you don't want to telescope it, you can simply uh, have it telescoped down and I could tow it as well. Yeah, very cool. So once we've got the uh, unit filled, so to speak, and we're <laughs> heading over for the station, Nice current turning radius, easy maneuverable, and you can show off to your campground buddies how well you can back up. So, okay. one of the things that's great about our Smart Tote 2 is that it's got a storage compartment. And inside this storage compartment, Jeff, is everything that you need to fill and empty uh, your onboard holding so tank. So you don't have to haul a hose along with you through the campground or anything. That's great. That's right. 
The, the thing that's nice about this is that the hose always stays connected. You never have to disconnect or reconnect a hose. You don't have to store a hose separately. Uh, many of the other uh, tanks on the market uh, don't have a hose built on board like this. So everything that you need is all right here. All right, we've got the Smart Tote 2 positioned next to the trailer where it's supposed to be. We're ready to go. What's next? All right, so before you fill the Smart Tote 2, the first thing that you want to do is open this little compartment door. And underneath this door is a built-in level gauge. Um, all Smart Tote 2 LX models come with the built-in level gauge. Now, what do you think is great about the level gauge? Well, uh, if I'm cooking a turkey, the red button pops up and says I'm ready. And I suppose that that gauge is calibrated for vegetarian on one end and paleo on the other. Or something along those lines? <laughs> kind of like that, oh, okay. Jeff. You're, yeah. you're, on, you're okay. on the right track. So what happens is, is when you're filling the tank from the bottom, liquid rises and that stem pops up and the water will uh, shut off, the, the stem will shut off flow. Okay. And it prevents a messy overfilling situation. Okay. So now that you have that compartment door open, uh, you're ready to fill the tank. Okay, so do you think a first timer can, can handle it? I think you should give it a shot. Okay, we'll see what happens here. All right, so step number one, of course, I saw earlier, open the compartment and take the vent off. And this just stretches out, okay. And once it's connected, it's just... You simply open the valves and fill the tank. If there's any remaining liquid in here, you shut the valves, you press the stem down on the tank, and that will release oh. any liquid that's remaining into the hose back into the tank. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so it knocks out the air, the air pocket. And, Correct. Okay. All right. And then? Now you're ready to take it to the dump station. And we're supposed to hold this up just to keep everything that's, that's at the water level in the tank? Exactly okay. right. You're not a first-timer, are you? <laughs> well, I've had a couple of bowls of chili in my day, so... <laughs> okay, and then we just collapse this back down. That's an interesting sound it makes. Okay. Fold it up, and now we're ready for the walk. Correct. Great. All right, here we are. First things first, open the vent cap. And now, and let me know if I do something wrong here because this is not a place where I want to make a mistake, okay? <laughs> I got you covered. If I remember right, we open this up, stretch this guy out. Take the cap off, the cap keep the off. hose elevated. Yep, and because of the liquid level in there. And we'll pop the dump tube on here and then Put that nozzle in. Now that nozzle comes equipped with all LX models. Oh, okay. The 18, 27, and 35 gallon LX all include this sewer nozzle, which is a nice feature. You don't have to buy anything else. Okay, and then we want to maintain that, that upside down P-trap. Correct. Right? So put that down here, and then to dump it, there's no valves or anything. All we do is yep. push down on the hose. Yep, once okay. you have your nozzle in the sewer, you push the hose down just like that and uh, wait for the holding tank to empty. Okay, and if and uh, we talked about the level a little bit, so if uh, you said the tank is made to automatically dump with, with the bottom? That's shape. right. Everything inside the tank is uh, meant to have a gravity feed so that all the liquid contents uh, completely evacuate the tank. If you're on level ground, the tank will completely evacuate. All right, and then once it's emptied, we once again raise it back up and uh, rinse that off and we get back to the camp grade, campsite. Put this on quickly, Correct. I suppose. All right. Simple Collapse as that. that. guy back down. Cover that up and then for the sake of the neighbors, we'll seal that back up. Great job. Perfect. Okay, terrific. So easy. Now, another feature that's built in is a clean out port. And when you're done emptying the holding tank, you can simply open this little door, insert a garden hose, wash out the tank, rinse it nice and good, and then simply close the doors. The tanks come in uh, several different sizes. Our, our two-wheel versions come in a 12-gallon, 18-gallon, 27-gallon, and 35-gallon. 
Our LX models, which we demonstrated here today, come in three sizes, an 18 gallon, a 27 gallon, and a 35 gallon. And the two wheel versions just have a handle and you more or less carry them like a uh, luggage in an airport with the wheels? That's correct. It's, yeah. a, it's a hand tow. We do offer an accessory tow strap uh, that you can purchase separately. Um, that is an option. Uh, we basically have a size um, and a price for any budget. Well, it looks like a pretty darn handy thing to have if you spend a little bit of time in any one given campground. They're very handy and uh, we sell a lot of them. So it's been a great product for us and, uh, and we look, look forward to uh, helping people with this situation. And it looks like with the improvements you've made too, it makes it even easier to use. That's right. Well, I'd like to thank Andy from Thetford for helping us to learn a lot more about the Smart Tote 2. Let's go, Jeff. Okay. Oof. Dang. Must be all that rich living. <laughs> be sure to visit our website at rollingontv.com and see how you can win a new Smart Toe 2 XL. Aquacam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Today's topic is titled Trailer Towing Tips and Tricks and I'll be demonstrating on our Ram Truck and Keystone RV Project Trailer. Let's get right to it. Let's start with how to avoid a painful accident waiting to happen. If you have been towing trailers for a while, you have probably banged your shin into the hitch more than once. With this Fastway Shin Guard safety cover, those days are over. It fits 2 inch and 2 and 5 16 inch hitch balls on ball mounts up to 2 and a half inches wide. Simply slide the shin guard down over the top of the ball, stretch it around the nut, and you're done. No more sore shins. Another great feature is this wiring harness tether. It stays attached to the harness wire with the flat end, and when you tow the trailer, you just pull the loose end through the loop on the side of the shin guard. Available in black, orange, and yellow colors. Next, we have the Fastway Tethered Ball Cover. It's a good idea to keep the hitch ball lubed with some grease, but it sure can get messy. This hitch ball cover solves the problem of getting grease everywhere, and there is this convenient tether to keep the cover in place when you are towing. The ball cover is available for 2 inch and 2 and 5 16 inch hitch balls. Another handy Fastway trailer product is this chain up safety chain sling. If you tow trailers, you probably experience noisy and dragging safety chains. The Fastway chain up solves that problem for good. Just slip the chain up over your hitch ball, thread the chains through so they can hang evenly and couple the trailer. It's that easy. When you're finished towing, pull the chain up off the ball and lay it over the coupler to keep the safety chains out of the dirt and mud until it's time to tow again. Last but not least is this Fastway 7-pin plug cover. This is a quick and easy way to keep dirt, bugs, and corrosion out of your 7-pin wiring harness and a convenient tether keeps the cover from getting lost so it's there every time you need it. All of these Fastway trailer products serve a useful purpose when it comes to towing a trailer. For more information on these great products, visit www.fastwaytrailer.com. Until next time, happy and safe camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show, and for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos, stories, and RV news, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. As usual, this has been another fun production. <laughs>